Now, whereas the Smashing Pumpkins have long since disbanded, rats are as abundant as ever, and they're ready to break their rusty cage and run. Bam! Two song references in one opening segment. I'm Travis from Brain Pulp TV, and this is Mono Black Rat Attack. Going full on tribal can be difficult in Popper, as there are not a lot of lords at the common level. There are pseudo lords like the veteran armor and a soldier deck, or the rebel guy here who synergizes with other rebels. Luckily with Ratso, there are some like swarm of rats whose power is based on the total number of rats you control. That's nice, but still not enough to base a whole deck around. The argument could be made for the Midnight Scavengers and the Graf Rats and their mighty melding, which I initially really tried to put in this deck. The Midnight Scavenger's mana cost is just too high, though he does let you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Although this is not an aggro deck, it just seemed too clunky to add enough cards to make the meld likely to happen, and cutting the cards down a number just make it less likely to see it happen. And you wound up with a bunch of okay, slightly below curve creatures with no upsides. Luckily there are a lot of rats at the common level who have some bonus abilities that will really annoy your other players. So let's begin as always with the creatures. A playset of chittering rats, only a 2-2 for 3, but a great tempo card that will have your opponent put a card from his hand on top of his library. It's like reverse card draw. It's awesome. But potentially not as awesome as a full on discard. Luckily we'll also have three of the ravenous rats, which will have an opponent discard a card upon entering the battlefield. Best of both worlds. There is of course a full playset of the typhoid rat. You can think of them more as a removal spell or attack or deterrent than anything else, but they may come in handy as a 1-1 for 1. He also works nicely with the next true rats on our list, three of the previously mentioned swarm of rats, and three of the Okiba Gang Shinobi, the Rat Ninja. If you attack with the Typhoid Rat, there's a much better chance of him going unblocked than with other creatures, because of the Death Touch and all, and you can Ninjutsu in the Ninja Rat here and he deals combat damage to a player and that player has to discard two cards in addition to three damage. Ed's done this trick to me a bunch of times so I can test it just how much it stings. Evil. Now all this is good so far, lots of annoying, one might even say dirty little rats, but we'll need something more, a solid backup plan or a long term goal. For that we have 4 of the Crypt Rats. A 1-1 one, one for 3, but you can spend X black mana and the Crypt Rat will deal X damage to each creature and player. Okay so that's good, but also a little bad, I mean we lose our creatures and we take the same amount of damage as our opponents. What if we're behind on life? Well, we're going to go with a mild life gain sub theme that will hopefully make sure we are ahead of life and survive the Crip Rats hit. We'll have three of the Vampiric Link. You want to talk dirty rats? With this enchantment on the Crip Rats, every point of damage that rat does will gain you that much life. So let's go over a small example here. You have the Crip Rats with Vampiric Link and, say, Chirting Rats in five swamps. Your opponent has a swarm of soldiers. You tap your land, spending all five on the Crip Rats' ability. He'll deal five damage to you to your opponent and all 5 creatures. Now I may need a judge ruling on this, but you should gain 35 life, lose 5, so a net game of 30, while your opponent loses 5 life and all his creatures. Yes you lose yours too, but seems like a fair trade. The other good thing about Vampiric Link is you can always cast it on your opponent's creatures too. That negates any damage that creature could ever do to you. Sneaky and a bit of a waste, but if you're desperate enough it could help buy you some time. So we'll move on to spells now, we have 13 in total. For card drawn filtering I went with two copies of Read the Bones. The argument can be made for Sign and Blood especially in a mono black deck, but the ability to scry is really valuable to me. I just can't ignore it. Two copies of Butcher's Glee, probably didn't see that one coming did ya? It's actually a really fun and effective card. It does so much, gains life, regenerates a creature and likely kills off another. There's also Grotesque Mutation and Rush of Vitality are a man of cheaper options, but I like the overall effect of Butcher's Glee. Plus, the artwork is surprisingly bright for a black card. Two copies of Echoing Decay, potentially hit multiple creatures in play. Two copies of Disfigure as well for removal. You could substitute Deadweight here as well, kill bears or permanently cripple bigger creatures. Really there are a lot of options for removal. Basically there are four slots in the spell category, depending on your local meta. Maybe a little light on removal for a creature heavy format like Popper, but remember we have four copies of the Typhoid Rats as well, and Butcher's Glee, as well as the Crypt Rats ability. I think we may have removal covered in this deck. Hopefully. Sometimes killing creatures just isn't annoying enough, so we'll have to run two copies of Duress to really piss him off. Now because we do have some mana costed creatures that are a little high, as well as some need for some late game mana, we're going to have two copies of Dark Ritual, or Cabal Ritual if you prefer. These can go really nicely with the Crypt Rat's ability and help generate extra black mana. You can even use these to help Ninjutsu out the Shinobi for an extra surprise surprise. 
And finally, one copy of Macar Walls to hopefully return a creature card to hand after a Crypt Rat board wipe. Land base is relatively straightforward. This is a monocolor deck, 16 swamps, 4 Baron Moor, still love that name, and 2 Mortuary Mire. Again, we will likely want a graveyard creature back at some point. 22 lands in total. This is the first time I've ever used more than 20 lands in a popper deck, but given the need for late game mana as well as some of the more mid range creatures, I think this is a comfortable number. Sideboard suggestions. Again, keep yourself fully stocked with removal options. Doomblade, Murder. Listen to your heart. Duress is a handy card, so you may want an extra copy or two of that in the sideboard. Or if all else fails, Ostracize is a nice creature based alternative. Maybe some Hymn to Turok, because, well, you're just plain evil with this deck. The variety of spells in the main board coupled with their lower numbers means there's plenty of room in the sideboard for extra copies of each of those as well. So there is a Rat Pack deck, aka Rat Attack. This is a mostly budget deck, but a few of the cards I mentioned are a little higher cost than I normally choose, but it's fun to step out of the comfort zone and try new things. Did I miss out your favorite rat? Do you think I should have gone with the Graph Rats and Midnight Scavengers as a backup? Please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, consider hitting the like button. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all of our Brain Pulp stuff, and we'll see you again.